Hey guys, here we are, chapter one of Drums, Girls, and Dangerous Pie. Such an awesome, awesome book. I'm super pumped to be reading it with you guys. Um, one of my favorites. Cool title. Uh, you'll see kind of what that means as we get into it. But awesome, awesome book. As I read a lot, I'm going to stop uh, here and there just to kind of talk about things almost like if we were in class together. So chapter one is titled Dangerous Pie. There's a beautiful girl to my left, another to my right. Hundreds of colored balloons are tethered down behind me, baking in the June sun. I'm wearing a brown gown that's sticking to my sweat-drenched skin, trying to keep my head straight so that my weird square cap doesn't fall off in front of the thousand people who are watching me. And of course, because I'm me, I'm spacing out. The questions are just tumbling through my mind. How did I get up here? What have I learned since September? How could my life have possibly changed so much in only 10 months? Signpost there would be tough questions. I'm not even sure I understand the questions, much less where to begin looking for the answers. I guess a good starting point would be the longest journal I've ever written in English class. This was back in September when I was pretty sure about life. The topic was the most annoying thing in the world. And we were supposed to write the usual one-page response to it. I sat there for a few minutes, staring at the back of Renee Elbert, who's the hottest girl in the eighth grade, trying to concentrate. Unfortunately, all I could concentrate on was Renee Elbert. Did I mention she's the hottest girl in the eighth grade? Miss Palm was always going on and on about brainstorming and lists and pre-writing. So I started a list of truly annoying things. Journal assignments, doll pencils, the pencil sharpener smell, Miss Palma's perfume, why doesn't Renee Albert ever look at me, hot girls who never look at skinny geeks, being a skinny geek, being a skinny geek named Steven. Just then I realized that Miss Palma was standing behind me, reading over my shoulder. I guess that's why I was being asphyxiated by her perfume. Thinking fast, I covered up my list, turned to her, and asked, Miss Palma, can the journal be longer than a page? Sure, Stephen. Why? What are you thinking about creating here? Creating here. She actually said that. Don't English teachers just slay you? My mom is actually an English teacher, but that doesn't mean I don't find my own English teachers a bit odd. Well, I'm having trouble crafting my prose. Yeah, crafting my prose. Two can play that game. What's your topic? Remember what I always say, FFF. It stands for form follows function, don't you know? Um, I want to write a big topic. And it's not exactly a thing. It's, it's, and then it hit me. Signpost. Aha, uh -huh, moment. The most annoying thing in my world is my little brother, Jeffrey. Wow, that's an ambitious topic. Go ahead. If you need extra time, feel free to take the project home tonight. Well, thanks, Miss Palma, a lot. Anyway, here's what I wrote. Having a brother is horrible. Having any brother would be horrible, I suppose, but having my particular brother, Jeffrey, is an unrelenting nightmare. It's not because he's eight years younger than I am, although that's part of it. How would you like to be the king of the planet for eight glorious years and then suddenly get demoted to vice king? It's not because he's cuter than I am, although that's part of it too. I have mouse brown colicky hair, glasses that are about an inch thick, and braces that look like I tried to swallow a train wreck. He has those perfect little kid chiclet white teeth, 20-20 vision, and little blonde ringlets like the ones on the angels you see on the posters in art class. It's not even because he hates me. He doesn't. The truth is, he idolizes me. And that's the problem. The kid follows me around like I'm Elvis or something. And while he's being much too cute and following me around, he's also destroying all of my stuff, including my self-esteem and my sanity. Take, for example, the dangerous pie incident. Jeffrey has known from an early age that the worst possible thing he can do to me is to touch my drum stuff. I have some rules about this. He may not play the drums. He may not pretend the cymbals are shields and he is a knight. He may not hide in the bass drum and pretty much any Jeffrey to drumstick contact is a massive no-no. But on one fateful afternoon last year, Jeffrey threw the rules out the window. On the tragic day, I came home, said hi to mom, 
glugged down some milk, and headed down to the basement to practice. I was in a particularly good mood, I remember, because Renee Albert had told me in PM homeroom that she liked my shirt. As this was such a grand occasion, I decided to take the special sticks down from their sacred perch and use them for my practice pad warm-up. In case you didn't know this, a practice pad is a thick, dense, flat piece of rubber. Usually it's glued onto a piece of wood. You practice playing drums on it because it feels a lot like playing on a real drum head. Anyhow, the special sticks would be just an ordinary pair of my favorite sticks, Regal Tip 5As with nylon tips, except that they had been autographed by my all-time drum hero, Carter Buford of the Dave Matthews Band. So many of you guys probably have not heard of the Dave Matthews Band. Your parents probably have if you bring it up to them. I also, on my Google site, I posted some video of Dave Matthews Band and Carter Buford. Good music, good time. I once saved up all my babysitting money for a couple months, got two tickets to a drum clinic Carter Buford was giving an hour and a half away in Philadelphia, and begged my dad to take me for two weeks until he finally gave in. At the clinic, during what I like to think of as two glorious minutes, Carter Buford himself called me up front to demonstrate a double stroke roll. After I did it, he said I had nice technique and signed my sticks right there in front of a room full of drummers. So I had spent quite a bit of blood, toil, tears, and sweat in order to get the special sticks. But the special sticks weren't on their shelf. Jeffrey! I ran upstairs at top speed, hoping I'd be in time, but not knowing that the odds were stacked against me. I burst into the kitchen and found Jeffrey doing his cooking thing on the floor. Pots and pans were everywhere. Don't ask me how. I had somehow no not noticed this on my way downstairs the first time. And Jeffrey was stirring some pretend concoction, that's a vocab word, in the deepest pot of all with my special sticks. I advanced toward him with what must have been a disturbing gleam of violence in my eye. Jeffrey, give me the sticks. But I'm just cooking. Give me the sticks. But the dangerous pie isn't ready yet. I don't care about your stupid four-year-old make-believe food. Give me the sticks. But this is real food. And it was. Jeffrey's dangerous pie was a zesty blend of coffee grounds, raw eggs, and their smashed shells, coke, uncooked bacon, and three matchbox racing cars. The special sticks still smell funny. Or maybe I should tell you about the please kill me mom affair. This fiasco happened after my all city high school jazz band concert last June. Getting into the all city band is a big, big deal, especially for a drummer, because there are six trumpeters, five saxes, four trombones, etc., but only two drummers. It was even a bigger deal for me last year because I was the first seventh grade drummer ever admitted into the all city high school band. They even had to send a special van to the middle school just to get me and this girl named Annette Watson, who was the backup piano player. She's actually really good, but there's this 12th grade guy who's been the main pianist since he was a freshman, and he's not about to get booted by a middle school girl in the senior year. She's funny, and she may be the only kid in the middle school who cares about music the way I do. But she's also kind of weird. It's like she's figured out how to play Beethoven and Thelonious Monk, but hasn't quite mastered the art of being a girl yet. It's not easy being the youngest guy in the band, by the way. They make fun of me all the time about my age, my size, my braces, and the way I stick out my tongue when I play. Also, everyone in the band has a cool nickname. When I first found this out at a rehearsal, the other drummer, Brian, was telling me to call the different people. Who's that? That's the king. Who's that? The duke. Who's she? The princess. What do they call you? The count. What does that make me? Um, how about the peasant? And the name stuck. Anyway, my whole family came to the concert and it was awesome. I had this huge drum feature in the Brian Setzer song called Jump, Jive, and Whale, which is a real song. I posted that on my Google site. And I nailed the whole thing. I usually practice at least an hour a day on my practice pad and another half hour on my drum set. Plus, I play in the marching band and the jazz group in school. And we had been rehearsing twice a week for All City for a couple of months. And I used to take lessons once a week. So I was playing great that night. So after the concert, my parents and Jeffrey came to the band room. They were all excited and everything, but Jeffrey was bouncing off the ceiling. You're a rock star, Stephen. 
No, I'm a jazz star, Jeffrey. My brother's a rock star. My brother's a rock star. Just then, Renee Albert stopped right next to us to congratulate her boyfriend. We'll just call him Biff, a sophomore guitarist with an alarmingly perfect complexion and muscles like Barry Bonds. You guys might not know who Barry Bonds is either. I'll post a picture on my Google site. Uh, Jeffrey saw Renee and started to whirl toward her. She lives around the corner from us, and I guess not even four-year-olds are immune to her charms and wiles. It seemed to happen in slow motion. Events were just crawling. Yet still, I knew I would never have time to run across town to a local zoo, steal an elephant tranquilizer gun, run back and fire it into Jeffrey's buttock before he could blurt out something that would mortify me and destroy my social status forever. Life snapped back into full speed, and Jeffrey shouted, Hey, Renee! My brother's a rock star. As Biff looked on with a sneer, Renee replied, Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yep, he is. Did you see him? His arms were zooming around the drums, just like when he practices at home in front of the mirror. Steven um, practices in front of a mirror? Yeah, it's cool. In his underwear, the blue ones. Right, Steven? I sat against my mom's shoulder and muttered, Please kill me, Mom. My dad tried at that point to control the situation, but by now Jeffrey had drawn a little crowd of my bandmates who were just waiting to see what else he would reveal about the peasant. My brother's great. Hey, Renee, do you want to hear a joke? What does ICUP spell? I give up. Close the bathroom door, get it? I tried to end his torment. Come on, Jeff. It's time to go out for ice cream with mom and dad. Just then, Brian chimed in. He had dropped a stick during In the Mood. may have been annoyed by the big applause after my solo. Let him finish, peasant. To which Renee and my mom simultaneously turned to me and burst out, They call you peasant? Dear reader, are you starting to see a pattern here? Miss Palma gave me an A on the journal entry. She called it droll. So I guess I actually managed to get some use out of Jeffrey's antics before the chaos of the year started. Looking back on those days now, I'd have eaten the dangerous pie if I could have stopped October from coming. So obviously Jordan Sonnenblatt, the author, leaves us off with some foreshadowing there, telling us that uh, October is not going to be a good month, saying he'd eat the dangerous pie, which was a mix of bacon, Coke, matchbox cars. He's saying he'd eat that uh, if it could have stopped October. So foreshadowing telling us that October is going to be bad. Um, this chapter really sets the stage because it shows us the relationship that Stephen has for it with his much younger brother, Jeffrey, and where this relationship starts off, and then how that may change throughout the book and why it goes through a change. But uh, for your discussion, you're going to do a quick journal entry, uh, kind of like Stephen talking about the most annoying thing. I want you guys to start thinking about what you think is the most annoying thing. And I'll challenge you. I know a lot of you guys will probably put younger siblings if you have them. Um, you can do that like Stephen did, but make sure you're specific about what it is about your younger siblings that, or older siblings that uh, is annoying. I was the youngest of three boys and I had two older brothers and they were both super annoying. Um, but be specific with why you think that they were annoying. All right. That's chapter one, Dangerous Pie.